food. Food. Yummy. Ah! Yummy. Hi, I'm Andy. This is Menu from Mars. Uh, we're doing dog food today. Um, my wife and I make all of our own dog food. We don't have to worry about it when poison dog food comes in or worrying if our dog gets enough nutrition. Uh, we just make it ourselves and there's no worry. Uh, we do this in stages over the course of several different weeks. We'll pick a particular day and spend an hour or two making one component of it. Um, you have to have dark muscle meat, which is uh, thighs, um, uh, ground beef. Uh, sometimes we take uh, the big roasts we get at the box stores and at Sam's and grind them down in this. Um, or sometimes we'll even use pork. Um, the pork roasts on the end of the loins that I cut for my pork chops. Uh, today, I am going to be grinding two different kinds of meat. We're going to do about 45 pounds of breast meat and about 45 pounds of uh, thigh meat, which should last us about 90 days for one dog. Uh, but our dog is about 90 pounds. Um, we're also going to be doing drumsticks. Uh, we. This part is real simple. I'll go through it once. We just put two drumsticks in a, in a baggie, and you're going to need close to 200 of these. Um, so we put two in a baggie and give her one drumstick in the morning with uh, a little bit of muscle meat, the thigh meat. And um, in the evenings, we give her the chicken breasts uh, with with uh, nothing really. Um, we make veggie cubes um, and those veggie cubes are where she gets the stomach contents that she needs, the vitamins, the minerals, all the things that, that the meat by itself lacks. So uh, what we use is you're going to need a good grinder, one that potentially can do bone because you never know if you're going to need to, as they get older, grind the bone up for them. Uh, in which case I would switch from drumsticks to chicken wings um, and they, this this puppy will grind anything uh, I've ground a whole turkey in here thigh bones everything and all uh, knife cutting board a couple of these so they don't turn your meat weird colors um, and I put my grinder on a little cake pan so that it'll be able to drop in here. So I've got two, one for breast meat, one for thigh meat today. Uh, hopefully it will hold everything. Um, so what I have to do first is cut the thigh meat up, um, rather the breast meat up so it'll fit uh, down inside of this. I want my biggest cutting board that I have and a wet paper towel so I don't kill myself. And uh, we are just looking to get it small enough to fit inside there. Wear gloves, I'm not gonna. I told you before, I'm stupid. Um, these are a little bigger than the kind we used to buy, um, but I just take them and I cut them either twice or three times into sizes about that big. That way it bloop, slides right down in the hole and uh, we're good to go. So I'm just going to cut up a package of these uh, to begin with and then we'll, here comes the dog, she can smell her food being made. And then I'll, I'll start this up and show you what it needs to look like and then I'm going to spend the better part of two hours huh, grinding and then I'll come back and show you what we do with it from there. 
We chose one year to go to raw food because we had a male Rottweiler that the vets wanted to put down because he couldn't keep store-bought food down. And we had never heard of the raw food diet before. And we do ours a little differently than some places do theirs, but our dogs get everything they need. They're always very healthy. And uh, we believe it's added years to their life in the past. Um, one more. Uh, and we usually do this with two people. My. Uh, my wife will run the grinder while I cut up the, the meat or vice versa. Vice versa. Keep a trash barrel handy. So, one person's cutting over here, another person's grinding over here. A uh, couple things. You want to keep your grinder parts, these, these metal aluminum parts, at the end of, of every grind session, I take them to the sink, I wash them, I dry them off, and then I coat them with a thin layer of olive oil. We didn't do that one time and we had thrown them in the dishwasher and it just returned all kinds of crap on all the parts. We actually had to trash them and throw them out and order all new parts, which was a nightmare in and of itself. So at the end of this, I'll also show you what I do as far as oiling this up. I got these plastic pans, like I said, we used to do them in the big metal throwaway pans much easier. When you were done, you just chucked them. But the aluminum in the pan started turning the meat colors like it had been cooked. So we've gone to the big plastic tubs. Um, this way you don't make the same mistakes I've made. This is the simpler part. It's just labor intensive. It's going to take you about an hour to do each set um, to grind and bag. The breasts will take about 90 minutes, the same thing with the thighs, if you've got two people. Uh, we will then go into bagging it, and then we throw it in a freezer, and we pull two or three days worth out at a time, keep it in the fridge, thaw it on the counter. Uh, from there, we're going to go into making jerky, yogurt treats, um, and bones. Then. We have puppies coming, or one, shortly, and that's a whole different set of making food depending on weight. This will also, speaking of which, depends on the weight of your own dog. Um, I'm a little more serious about this because uh, making dog food I, is a passion of mine, uh, not feeding store-bought. So um, the amount of food that you're going to give your dog is relative to how much they weigh, how active they are, how old they are, and uh, whether or not they're putting on weight on this diet, which they should not. They should lean out on this diet. Um, but if they're not, and you're giving them the food, you need to just scale it back. We are still in the process of scaling back for our dog. Uh, little tricks like not giving them bones at night, uh, only giving them bones in the morning, because bones are very fatty, and they'll put on weight. Um, the muscle meat, uh, the beef, uh, the ground beef that's 10% fat, or uh, the ground chicken thigh, uh, chicken thighs, you, the boneless ones, um, you give them in the morning and then you give a leaner cut like the pork or the chicken breast at night. And this helps tremendously. They're not going to bed with a lot of fat in their system, but she's still getting a little too much food, so we'll grind this up and then I'll stop weighing out the bags and and uh, we'll, we'll try to do something about getting, on the, getting something on the site that lets you know a general framework of how much to start with. And then again, I know you hear this all the time with everything, but you really need to scale this to your own dog. There is no one answer for this. So, like I said, we had a dog they wanted to put down. He couldn't eat bagged food. Uh, his name was Samson and we weren't ready to give him up yet. So I came home, I spent a buck and a quarter, 125 bucks on this grinder. Um, we went out to Sam's and bought just a crap load of meat by the case, brought it home. We bought whole turkeys, we bought everything because we didn't know what to buy. Uh, we got on the internet, we looked around on what to do, what not to do. Uh, Ian Billingsworth book helped us a lot. We don't follow it exactly. Um, we kind of do things a little different. We don't give our dogs a a um, a day where they uh, where they're fasting, um, 
and bulk them up the first day and then fast. We, we kind of believe in the same approach for humans, small meals throughout the day, uh, every day. Um, so get his book, um, The Barf Diet. There's another book out there called Grow Your Puppy with Bones. Um, all of these books will, um, will help you as far as gauging how much you need to give your own animal. So, the diatribe is over. By the way, we started feeding Samson the, the raw food diet. They wanted to put him down. We got an extra four or five years out of him. So, um, we, we got another dog that we rescued that we switched over to this diet when we got her. She looked like she had maybe a year left when we got her. And we ended up having her three years. And I think it's due to this particular diet. So, if you just want to grind these, it's simple, easy and you gotta plug it in. I make that mistake a lot. Here we go. I need my plunger. Oh, I'm gonna stab you in the face. And it's quiet too. That's how quick one whole package of six pounds goes. This is what you're looking to get. Something, this texture. I, uh, I use um, a big chop disc on this. You can use the real fine ones that they use for uh, sausage or hamburger. And you can go from like a big one, real small holes. I like this, it chops it up. It still gives the dog a little something to chew on. They don't chew, but if they did, uh, maybe this would provide a little bit better of a texture. So this is, this is what you take and you bag up after you weigh it. Um, I have about 40 more pounds to cut up and then some chicken thighs. And after it's all ground up, we'll, uh, we'll come back. Okay, there might come a time, and yes, I'm wearing earplugs because this thing gets loud. Uh, another one of those things I suggest you do, where you have frozen chicken. That's where a sharp knife comes in. With these grinders that'll grind bone, even if you have these rock hard pieces of chicken, you can still just cut them down with a knife. And because your knife will go through them, your, uh, your grinder will go through them. So I just cut them in small enough parts, frozen parts, to go through the grinder, little blocks, like so. See, do you see, are you close enough to see? And then those will fit right down the hole of the grinder and you're good to go. I ran into this this time because when you thaw 80 pounds of meat in a tub so that it doesn't leak all over your kitchen, uh, sometimes you run into issues like this where something didn't thaw completely. Again, wear gloves even though I didn't. But in that case, I don't let it stop production. I just get a sharp knife. Don't cut yourself because I can't afford to be sued. I think I've said that. And uh, just cut it into nice little chunks for the thing. And this will grind right through frozen shit. So don't even worry about it. Kill the damn camera! We have all our meat ground up. And you can see about 45 pounds of meat right here, maybe 50 on the, um, on the thighs. Got to clean out the grinder now. Had hot dogs a few nights ago, and uh, because there's an odd amount of these versus what's in the package, uh, I have some leftover hot dog buns. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it and just feed a couple of them down in, and then when this starts feeding out bread, obviously I'll remove the meat tray and uh, throw out the residue. So here we go.
yeah, we've got bread coming out of the end now, which means that any of that gooky, nasty stuff that was stuck up inside the grinder has come out. All the meat has come out. A little bit of bread there we got to get rid of. Um, but the dog will even eat this. Ooh, right under the camera tripod. Come over here. Do it. Thank you. Eat it up. Hey, she'll eat it. All right. So now I gotta take my grinder apart and clean it, but first I wanna wrap this 45 pounds, get it set to the side. I'll clean and oil this, and then we'll start in on, on this. So, au revoir for now. Okay, we're done grinding. I fit, oh, I can take my earplugs out now so that I can actually hear what I'm saying. Um, we fed all the meat through here, and um, we just have to disassemble it to clean. Uh, obviously, this. Woo! We just break this down. Ooh. Here's all that bread we fed through. just needs to be wiped down and it's good to go. This, however, it's got some stuff stuck in it. So I'm gonna wash this in the sink uh, and then we'll dry it off with paper, not paper towels, my towels I went and got right there. And then we will, um, we'll coat it with olive oil and I'll, I'll show you that too. Ooh, that's a big chunk. So, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. All right, here we are. We have all our cleaned pieces. They've been washed. I've towel dried them. Um, in order to keep them looking and functioning the way they need to, now you gotta hit them with some olive oil. It doesn't have to be a lot. And yes, I said doesn't. That's it, you just wanna make sure you get every part because otherwise it releases this really yucky oxidization coating all over your stuff and you won't want to use it because it then it goes ahead and gets on the meat that you're trying to give your dog and it kind of defeats the purpose of healthy um, yucky metal residue not not so healthy um, so it doesn't have to be a big thick coat um, this isn't winter we're just we're just uh, a light, light coat. And even still, I'm gonna bring this over here. Even still, you can see that just a little bit of metal, uh, oxidization, aluminum, whatever the hell they call it, uh, came off on that. Not good. Um, so I take it and I just go through and I coat every piece. Uh, and taking this little extra time in between, you know, we don't have a lot of time before I have to go fishing to, uh, to get this done, but taking a little extra time now to protect your stuff and your equipment will pay off down the line. And that will, that can be put away just like this. They feel just like they have a coating of oil on them because they do. So, and yes, I just hit myself in the side of the face with water from it. Um, these are all ready to go. I'm gonna put these away and we're gonna start bagging. Vote Richard Dick Frothy for president. Because if I'm not president, all those blahs and homosexuals will come in your house and steal your kids. Well, I'm Dick Frothy and I approve this message. Okay, here we are. This is our muscle meat, our thigh meat, all ground up, 45 pounds. And here is our breast meat, all ground up, 45 pounds. Okay, I'm gonna take these with my little food scale and an ice cream scoop and a couple of paper plates because I'm a paper plate kind of guy. Um, and we are going to 
weigh out uh, six ounces of the thighs and put them into a bunch of different bags. Uh, the reason only six ounces on the thighs is because we're also going to give one of these drumsticks in the morning with the thigh meat. It'll equal 11, 12 ounces, and that's about what I give my dog in the morning. Uh, and then we are going to weigh out um, about 11 ounces each of the breast meat. And then that's going to be her entire meal in the evening because I no longer give her bones in the evening because she started to chunk out. So 11 to 12 ounces per bag of this and then uh, 6 ounces per bag of this and it's it's going to take you the better part of two hours to do. I'm not going to make you sit through it while I do it uh, but I will show you at the end all the different bags we got. So away we go. We have finished uh, scooping everything out into bags. That's all it is. This is the baggie. This is uh, between five and six ounces because the drumsticks that we give in the morning are different sizes, but they average on a daily basis between uh, five and six ounces. And that gives 11 to 12 ounces of food in the morning. And then the chicken breasts, we also did the same way. We uh, did between 11 and 12 ounces per bag of that. That's already down in the freezer. Uh, we only got about 60 days out of that because I forgot we had subtracted bones in the evening. Uh, and this we have 90 days, uh, plus we were able to pull a little out for the pup when he comes. Uh, and then when he, he comes, I can get his weight and figure out how much of this he's going to need versus chicken wings and vegetables and all the rest. So we put two drumsticks. You can do wings, uh, the whole wing. And the dogs can eat them like that. Uh, my dog eats this, no problem. Uh, and I will actually show you a video of that at the end of this. Um, so these all go into the freezer. We have about 40 pounds of these to do on another day because uh, it's getting close. The chicken breast is all done and down in the freezer. So we're going to move on to veggie cubes and uh, we'll start there about three hours to do all of this. So for three hours, for two and a half months, our dog can eat nothing but raw good food. So far. Vote Richard Dick Frothy for president. Because I am the only candidate that's willing to spit in the face of our forefather and demand that a constitutional amendment be added to the Declaration of Independence that says we are endowed by God with certain inalienable rights, and amongst those are life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness, and the right to keep gays from marrying. This may be the most important right that we have received from God, to ban gays from marrying. Yucky. God doesn't want that. What do you mean I can't add a constitutional amendment to the Declaration of Independence? Don't make me take my sweater vest off and show you my man nipples. Well, I'm Dick Frothy, and I approve this message. Dog food. We're still making dog food, but it's worth it. Um, see, I still have my same shirt on. The only difference is I shaved the other day and I cut my own hair because I'm cheap. So we're going to make veggie cubes, which is very important that you give vitamins and vegetables and more just raw food to your dog uh, that isn't just protein and fat. Um, we give our dogs one of these with every meal. Uh, we go to Target and Walmart and we pick up uh, just these cheapo little ice cube trays that are exactly a tablespoon each um, and you get them after Valentine's Day or winter or Easter uh, you get them for 50 cents or a buck a piece so we use these to make the individual cubes give them one in the morning with their food one in the evening they eat it all there are some schools of thought that you just fill your dog's bowl with carrots 
potatoes, apples, and, and the dog will eat it. Our dogs don't. Uh, so I needed to find another way to get this uh, nutrients and the vitamins and minerals into our dog, and this was the way to do it. Um, I keep saying dog and dogs because we're picking up a puppy this Friday, so we will have two. Uh, and that puppy will get a cube with every meal. Uh, well, it's morning and evening meal, not the other two. What you're going to need for this is a food processor. I have a special food processor that I only use for this. Um, you'll see why. Uh, sharp knife, cutting board with a uh, wet paper towel underneath it. I've already washed all my vegetables and everything, so I'm just going to kind of run through it. Um, if you need the exact recipe and the stuffs that I the the stuffs the stuff that I put in it. Just go to menufrommars.com, um, and and it's all listed there with this episode. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, this is not precise. Okay, when you see me putting in, well, about this much of this and this much of that, this isn't a precise mixture. I I'm just an old hand at it, and old. I know what needs to go in, uh, and the vegetables are wh whatever's in, vegetables and fruits, whatever's at the store and looks fresh. Uh, I try to buy most of my stuff organic, um, like the kelp, uh, but sometimes, you know, I end up with, um, you know, from now, this is the alfalfa powder. So I'm going to run down what I use. Uh, and that's just for this batch. This will change. Different things will go in. Different things will come out. But this is a nice round idea of what you need. Kelp, organic if you can. Uh, alfalfa powder, same, same. Uh, this is more kelp that we got in this package that I keep in this. Um, virgin flaxseed oil, or just flaxseed oil. Um, keep it cold in your fridge after you open it. Buffered vitamin C powder just because I'm a big believer in vitamin C. Enzymes. Yeah, let me bring this up. Enzymes. Enzymes. This is the Backpack Plus. This is for all pets, uh, but I use this in our veggie cubes. Uh, I don't quite follow how much you're supposed to give, um, but excellent, excellent product. This will be our third and fourth dog that we've given these to. Um, Lifesaver, and they're great. They've got everything your dog needs. I don't really have to do all of this because I have this, but fresh stuff is good too. Um, so you're gonna need some of this. It's the Backpack Plus. Go to enzymes.com and get it. Uh, Non-fat, plain, 0%. Yogurt, because you don't want to add any more fat to the dog's diet if you can help it. Uh, cultured, there, there have to be live cultures in here. Eggs, two to three to four. Shells and all, you washed them with antibacterial soap, right? Because your dog's going to eat the shells. Okay. Um, baby spinach, I also washed already. Uh, I went through and picked it out by hand because sometimes you get the slimy, icky leaves with it um, that lead to E. coli. Uh, big, big apple because apples are in season right now. A pear, a carrot, unskinned, a sweet potato, unskinned. Um, we just need to start cutting it up and hacking it up and you'll get to see what it all looks like. We'll put these over here. We don't need those yet. And uh, we're going to start adding stuff to this. So I put in all of my raw material first um, and then I add all the vitamins after because they take up less room but a uh, nice sharp knife will let you cut right through the sweet tater uh, otherwise you'll be fighting with it this has to be raw do not cook it but wash it uh, cut it into little 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 pieces little chunks and you'll, you're going to notice I'm not putting everything in all at once. Like I, I'm not cutting, putting the entire potato in uh, right from the get-go. Because I don't know if I'm going to have room for everything. So 
little bit from the apples. Telemachida's calling me again. Tisk tisk. Uh, skin and all, very important. Do not get the seeds or anything that contains the seeds from your apples and pears. Um, just cut as far away from the, the core as possible so you don't get it on there. All right, we've got this carrot. Carrot is in, pear. My pooch she was just in here whenever we start making stuff like this the dogs come around oh here she is now uh, wondering if they're gonna get to sample it so just cut up all your vegetables and fruits what's up Max uh, green leafy good for us good for them uh, we'll start with a couple of eggs just plop them right in I'm gonna put a little flaxseed oil in. Uh, I'm gonna say a tablespoon to two tablespoons. That's about right. Uh, because I use this also to season my pans. Uh, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna crank this on and uh, get this all crushed up. And. Uh, I'll probably fast forward it so you don't have to listen to it. So. Okay. Now that we've chopped almost everything in there up, you can see I've got about half the room again. Time for yogurt. I usually go with about half at first. Uh, that was about two thirds. So, a little bit of vitamin C, buffered, powdered. Uh, it probably looks like three tablespoons. Uh, kelp. I'm going to say four to five tablespoons, it looks like. Alfalfa. Same thing, four to five tablespoons or whatever. Whoop. You can't give them too much of this stuff, so uh, don't be afraid to put some in. Now, the directions for this, for a 100 pound dog, is half a scoop um, the, per day. The scoops are about an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, but it says half a gram is a half a scoop so this is probably going to be 30 to 60 days so you can see why I sit down and do the math at times and if you want to you can but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself three heaping tablespoons of this three and a half why not, right? And that's it. We're going to beat this up. And if it's too dry, which it shouldn't be from the yogurt, uh, I'll add that last egg. Shell and all. Yes, your dogs can eat the shells of eggs. They would in the wild. You don't see them crack them open out there and just eat the insides. So, all right. Uh, it's just like bone, so it's good for them. Uh, I'm going to crank this up again, so go some way. Exactly what you're looking for. I'll come get the camera and let you see. You see that green slop? See how watery it is? That's what you're looking for. Okay. Uh, that means I have enough moisture in it and everything that needs to be in it is in it. Um, so all that's left is to clean up and uh, get ready to put it into the trays. We've got everything hacked up 
and put in this bag. I'm just gonna make a makeshift piping bag uh, and we are going to pipe this all into here. So you just gotta cut the tip off the corner off the bag. You're gonna get messy, but uh, this is so good for your dogs and cats really. Uh, and we're just gonna start putting them in. And uh, I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay, now this happens occasionally when I switch the piping bag and I have to adjust it and everything. I'll usually overfill a few. Uh, I did real good on the first tray, uh, but when that happens, I just go through and uh, use the extra from those to fill in the ones that uh, didn't quite get enough. because I did overfill some of them and underfill others. Uh, the great thing about these things is they go right into the dishwasher. So you don't have to worry about cleaning them. And when you freeze this up, um, they'll make great little cubes. But uh, almost the perfect amount here uh, I could have gone with three tablespoons instead of three and a half of the enzymes. Uh, I'll remember that for next time. But this is, this is a work in progress, so you're probably going to make adjustments as you go. And like I said, whatever's in season is what you want to grab for fruits and vegetables or whatever looks good. Not everything's, you know, what's in season in December. Um, but at this rate, um, you know, I've got just shy of 120 of these. With two dogs, that's, that's not going to last very long. <laughs> Maybe 45 days. Um, but that's, uh, you know, once a month, once every other month, you're, you're making these cubes and you know that your, your four-legged children are getting all the vegetables and vitamins that they need to stay healthy and it, it really does help and it really does work so I'm gonna put these in a freezer and uh, I'll bring you back when we're putting them out for the last time and uh, we'll try our experimental jerky we're back and I've had the veggie cubes in the freezer for a little while paper plate bag and you just, because these are the silicone ice cube trays, you can just go through and push them out onto a paper plate. Throw that in the sink. And that's it. You do this a bunch of times and you have veggie cubes for a couple of months for your pooches. And these are dishwasher safe, so I'm going to go ahead and push these all through. I'll speed it up so you don't have to watch it. And uh, I'll show you how many you get. And that's all of them. They're in the little shapes of hearts. Aww. So we take them. We put them in a Ziploc bag. And these go right in the freezer. And you grab one. Every time you give your pooch a meal and toss it in the, in the bowl with all the raw meat that you saw Russ make earlier. So, there we go. That's it. It's that simple to give your dogs everything they need as far as vitamins and minerals go. Uh, and it's made up predominantly of raw vegetables, fruit, and eggs. So, uh, let me bring one of these over here so you can see. When they're frozen, they have the little pieces of apple in it and little eggshells and things like that. I don't know if you can see them, but it, uh, it's good for them. It supplements their food. So if you're worried about giving them an all protein and fat diet, you don't have to because you have these to go with it. So we are going to move on now. Do it. It's easy. 
vote Richard Dick Frothy for president. Because maybe if we ignore the female reproductive system, it'll just go away. Yeah. Those things are scary. No, spank you. Well, I'm Dick Frothy, and I approve this message. Dog treats. What we do for our dogs and pups is we make jerky. Now, I'm a little rusty at this because my wife usually does this part of it, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try anyway. Uh, what you're gonna need is a 10 pound cryo pack of 90% lean hamburger. We have 90-10 here. We buy it by the case from Sam's. Choose your box store that you wanna get it from. Um, but you're gonna use this entire thing. We also have a little bit of kosher salt. You can use whatever table spot salt you have. Uh, and these Nesco food dehydrators is what you need. And uh, I forget what brand this is, uh, but it's just a jerky gun. And I believe that's what they call it, the jerky gun. Um, any jerky gun will do. We think this one works better because the little red ones, when you went to pull the trigger, the back would just pop off it and it got kind of aggravating. <laughs> so again, any jerky gun will do. This just happens to be the one we like. Take your big cryo pack of hamburger and cut it open. We used to do this in plastic bags, so if you're not working with something this big, if you're just going to use like five pounds or four pounds or whatever it is, I used to take a Ziploc bag, fill it about halfway with meat, and then just put a pinch or two of this salt in. You want the salt to, to just be slightly, work slightly as a preservative. Um, otherwise, you don't want to put anything in this if you can help it. But. Uh, Cut this open. Ooh. Down both sides. Not a very sharp knife. I should sharpen it. <laughs> ah. And then because you split the thing down the middle, it should open up nice like that. And then you just take a little salt, just a little bit. You, you don't want to actually salt the meat. Um, you just want a very little bit. Maybe a teaspoon, maybe a half teaspoon tops is what we're putting in here. And then mix it together. Make sure you get the salt worked in there. Um, it's the only thing that's really going to preserve this besides the dehydrating. But this doesn't really dehydrate it the way that it gets done commercially or that you could do yourself with a fan and some other stuff, uh, other ways of making jerky correctly. So make sure you get it in there because you will need just a little bit of salt. So. We then take the jerky gun and you just feed the hamburger into it. When you're done, screw on the end. Now you'll have to excuse the condition. It's a little dirty, uh, but this is our second round, so that's why. And then you just put the jerky on these little trays. We have one that does dual pieces of jerky.
And that's it. You fill all the trays with the hamburger. And then we have a second one over there I'm going to fill. And when I'm done, I'll show it to you. And that should be, that should be it. You set it up um, to go overnight. And uh, once that's done, uh, you let it sit, you bring it up, you throw it into plastic bags, which I'll show you after. And then uh, we have jerky for the dog. So I'll be back after I'm done doing all of this. I've finished putting everything into the trays. This is all we've done. You just doesn't have to be perfect. This is what you're looking to do. Every tray is like that. And then we washed our hands and we squirted down the countertop with antibacterial. Yes? You better. You don't want to get your family sick. And then you just take the tops. Um, pop them on. Plug them in. You let this run for about 90 minutes. And then what you have to do is you have to come back and you have to pat them all down and flip them over. You're trying to get rid of some of the fat so you don't, uh, it doesn't carry over. It'll go rancid if, if you do it. Um, flip them on high keep them these Nesco ones only like I said 90 minutes two hours right around that time you'll know they'll be able to flip and they'll start cooking and then what we do is we take them and we put them downstairs um, until morning so we're getting ready to go to bed in a couple of hours so that's why I've done it now I'll pat them down we'll put them downstairs plug them in turn them down to the second notch about 105 degrees Fahrenheit and let them run all night and when you're done, what you'll have yeah. is noise. No. You can put them in a bag like this, and they're just little beef jerky treats. Oh, here comes the dog. She saw me grab them. Ready? What is this? Huh? There you go proof positive that she likes them. So, if your dog is very lucky, while you're doing the jerky gun, you'll give him or her some raw hamburger, just so they can have something healthy for once. Uh, that's it. So, I'll, I'll bring you back when I pat these down, and uh, now you can make jerky for your dog. This'll probably fill two Ziploc bags and while you're using one, you can freeze the other one, right? And uh, just pull it out of the freezer about 10 minutes before you want to give your dog treats once you finish with this bag. So they go crazy for these. You'll be surprised how much more they like these than regular treats. And they're healthy. They're not full of all that crap that you get in all the store-bought things. And really, this took me about a half an hour. And, uh, be another 15 minutes or so to pat them down and flip them, put them downstairs, and then 10 minutes in the morning to, to uh, bag them. And our jerky gun, after two nights of use, goes right in the dishwasher, and it can be washed that way. You can't wash these in the dishwasher. You gotta kinda wash them in the sink, and that's a pain in the ass, but you know, it's, it's worth it if you want your dog to have something healthy. So, I'm out of here while these go. I'm gonna go shower, and uh, Start watching again. All right, you little hose bags. We're done with the upstairs portion of our evening. You're gonna flip all of these and pat them down. You wanna get any extra oil off them. So you just kinda pat any extra fat oil off the top of them and then just like the name sounds you flip them over 
I know that sounds way more difficult than it is, but that's it. You go through each and every tray and you do this and then you pat them down again because they're going to be greasier on the underside than they are on the top side. Um, and then when you're done with that, covers on, second notch from the bottom, like I said, it was 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Pop them off, plug them in downstairs overnight, and uh, in the morning you have a crispity, crunchity piece of jerky for your dog. So I'm going to go ahead and do this, and uh, I'll let you go to make your own dog some jerky. Jerky. You're Dick Frothy for president. Because I'm not gay. Well, I'm Dick Frothy, and I approve this message.